Hi everybody, uh, I am happy to be here. And really I found it's different between the country that I came and here. Here you have a lot of bicycles. <laughs> and we have a lot of donkeys. <laughs> you know, the first time when my father took me to the school, the only transportation that I used was our brown donkey. Uh, my name is Awadullah Hamid. Yes, I am environmental conservation manager. But I was born in a small village called Karakule Shamal. Near Saraf Umra town in North Darfur state, Sudan. My father, like uh, rest of the villagers, he had cows, goats, and sheep, and he is practicing uh, traditional farming system. My father was in charge of protecting the trees. People in our village cutting trees for firewood, for charcoal, for building materials. My father telling them not to, to, to cut the branches, not the trees. And also telling them, telling them to collect the, the dead trees from the remote areas. And traditionally, we have some trees forbidden to be cut. So I learned a lot from my father, transplantation of the trees, the care of the trees. I remember in, in my village, people leading very simple uh, existence. They are honest, and they are working together. <laughs> in our village, we don't have pollution at all because we don't have factories, and even we don't have cars. So we have fresh air in our village. Uh, for me, the environment is a part of my life. In Sudan, we have three seasons. We have autumn, that's rainy season, and we have winter, that's cold, and then we have uh, uh, summer, which is hot, which is different from here, it's something like <laughs> 45 degrees in the summer we have. <laughs> here, you, here you have 40, 25, something like that. So the people practicing farming and pastoralists, and their life is depend on the natural resource. This natural resource base is climate sensitive. And at the same time, they are affected by the impact of the climate, climate change and climate variability. And also there is conflict between the communities, especially in the dry air of the uh, low rainfall and the drought. Uh, the climate affecting, the, the impact of the climate in our people normally is the long drought spells and the recurrent drought and also land degradation and, uh, and erratic rainfall and unpredictable in, in terms of the amount and also the distribution. So also it causes conflict between the people. Especially we have the conflict between the farmers and the pastoralists over the crop destruction and over the blockage of the corridor. So in Darfur we have 11 corridors that pastoralists used to move from south to the north, depending on the season. When it, it, there's a lot of rain in the, in the south, they move to the north. When it gets dry, they come back to the south. So the conflict even among the, among the pastoralists when there is dry, because there's competition over the, the, the ranch land and the pastures. Uh, really, it hurt my heart to see the people, they don't have enough food in our, in our village, unfortunately. And even they don't have enough, uh, they don't have clean water to drink. And even they don't have uh, source of the energy for the cooking purpose. And the, the people, the, the, the children, they will not go to the schools. And there is no doctor to cure them when they get sick. For me, I have to help my people. I have to stop with them and help them because my people. Originally, I'm from village, from, the, from that community. Even in the time when the conflict started in Darfur, and there is a lot of uh, risk. I have been arrested several times, but I have to go to see the people and make things change, because those are my people. And also when the conflict started in, in Darfur, we have a lot of UN NGOs, and we have uh, a lot of UN agencies, and we have NGOs that are paying a lot of money for their stuff, but I am not managed to go there, because I feel it is not job satisfaction. It is a it's not a matter of the money, it is a matter of how to stop with your people and help them. So I didn't go to there. So the, our activity, the first activity I did for the my community, I start to organize them into the, 
look into the bodies like village development committee. B before I start that, I have to enter the community through the native administrations. And then I have to build trust with them. So they, they should trust me and I trust them. How I do that? I have to respect them. I have to listen to them. I have to learn from them. I should start by what they have and build on what they know because they have a lot of knowledge. And I think my, my second degree of the university I get from the community. <laughs> yes. Okay, to respond to that, I used approach of participatory action plan development. This just helped me to know the problems. So I brought the pastoralists, the farmers, women, youth, IDBs, and technical people from the government just to sit together and plan. I ask each group to bring the, their, their, their problems. After that, I, I ask them to come in one big group so as to make a long list of the problems. The problem of the water problem for drinking, water for agriculture, blockage of the, of the corridors, and people and, and children may not, they, 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 they don't, they, they're not able to go to schools, and there is no doctor to cure, and uh, other, other problem of the, of the security and all those things. So together we put, we put the, 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 the important problems to make the priority for the problems. So in that case, I select three problems together with the community. One is related to the land degradation, and the other is related to the, to the, uh, to the farming, and the one is related to the blockage of the corridors. So in the farming, we almost, we were, yeah, we, I we used to uh, make some kind of the water uh, harvesting structures that help the community just to get water for farming because we don't have water. So we have to have that kind of making the, the water harvesting, so just to community use for the farming. For the corridor, I brought the native administration of the uh, pastoralist and the native administration of the farmers and the technical people from the government. We sat under the tree and we discussed the issue of the demarcation. Because when we talk about the corridors, it is not only that the, the, the roads are taking people from place to place. No. Uh, it, is, it is a life. You find people going through that. Animals, women, children, whatever. So we agreed to demarcate the, 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 the corridor for the animal, just to bring a social peace between the pastoralists and the, and the, and the farmers. So in that, we agreed on the width of the, of the corridor, and mm -hmm. we agreed to put where the, the services like water services, like uh, resting places, to make the, the pastoralists to access the market to bring their, their needs from the market, and then they can go because they will not go continuously. They need to take rest. We agreed on the colors that we should put in the different colors that indicate the in intensive farming land, opening areas for the grazing, and, and those things. So this brought a, uh, a social peace between the farmers and the country. And I believe that the climate change has caused a lot of conflict between the different life groups. That is definitely happening, and we have so many stories about that in, in Darfur. So we need to be wise. The human development is not an option. It is not a luxury. It is an essential part of development. Thank you very much.